recently right. you just had that idw star wars adventures clone wars number one peach momoko variant that kind of took off like fire it's heating up on the secondary market right now was that one of those picks that you had your hands all over i, I heard that that was one of your choices for yeah. that cover specific it was it was so we we struggled with star wars titles in the past uh whenever i want to do a star wars book my wife just wants to hit me um so <laughs> they they can be they can be challenging uh to sell um but i really like peach's art and idw has a reasonable minimum number of copies you have to order so i went for it um we tried to get, to get ahsoka on the cover but um lucas film said no so i suspect they're holding her off because they're going to do a comic book series with her they don't want me running around with the cover <laughs> before they before they do that but so they gave me kind of a few uh, limited number of choices uh, for the book. And so we chose Yoda. Um, and I was nervous because, you know, not everybody wants a little green guy on their cover. And, um, you know, it, it is the guy who, who buys from me who likes Venom, uh, Clayton Crane Venom cover, going to want to buy a Peach uh, Yoda cover. So I was nervous. Um, and then we shared the art kind of on social media and, it got a really good reception. So we just, we went for it. Um, I was actually going to bundle the Yoda cover together with Peach's Ray cover and sell them as a package for a really low price. <laughs> and when we saw the the response on social media, my wife said, let's not do that. Just, just you know, trust your instincts. And so we put it up for sale. And I mean, my, my allocation of the book sold out pretty quickly. Um, so, it, it it went really well. I'm really thankful for it. But that was definitely one where I just, I went with my gut on it and I was willing to just, you know, not sell a single copy. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely. That was one. So I'm glad that worked out. We're very fortunate and Peach did a great job on the cover. Well, I think that's an amazing anecdote there, Kevin, is you kind of get to, to look behind the decision making that goes into making one of these variants you know they don't just happen like the, the, the books don't just put themselves on hot lists as people like to say <laughs> you know people have to create these exclusive variants and you went through the process of how you did that you talked about i like how you mentioned the consternation you had where you weren't sure if this was going to work but boy did it you're talking about a book that you released for 20 dollars, selling on the secondary market now more than four times what it originally went wow. for i mean just <laughs> staggering secondary market prices and you know this is actually something kevin that's bothered me uh probably all weekend really kind of ruined my weekend okay. was i have to congratulate you i did it on on instagram i'm gonna do it publicly right here on the channel okay. but uh an absolute achievement for somebody who creates a retailer exclusive variant is for it to penetrate the secondary market very few of them do mostly we know they're marketed as collectibles for the like you mentioned people who feel a certain way about a character or an artist um but this book did this book was one of the most talked about books over the last week and it was so talked about that the various publications that cover the secondary market and the hot lists um put it on the list, which is, is unique for a retailer exclusive variant. And it's another reason why we wanted to have this episode right here, because we, as we mentioned, there's, for whatever reason, sometimes gets to be a negative connotation surrounding retailer exclusive variants. And people, uh, they don't always want to give credit or their roses, as the young kids would say, to the to people who, who deserve them. So I noticed uh, that you made the comicbookinvest.com CBSI Hot 10 list. You made the Key Collector Top 20 um, list. And then you also made Comic Tom's shortened down version of the top 10 from Key Collector. But I also noticed that not a single one of these sources quoted Frankie's comics as the creator of the book. No one even referenced you. Now, I don't know whether or why that is because CBSI or Comic Tom couldn't say have an issue with retailer exclusive variants because both of them produce retailer exclusive variants. Uh, so, so they couldn't, they, yeah, they, they can't, they can't really take a moral high ground there. Uh, Comic Tom actually used the segment to promote his upcoming Peach from Oco variant. Um, but so neither of them um, can take that moral high ground. 
and if you're arguing that you're trying to like give people the information, well, you know, you let pe- let your community know where this book was because, as you mentioned, you have a Ray variant coming right behind it, and we no one, no one went and did their research and found out anything about the Facebook group that was alerted about <laughs> that, how this how this book even kind of came to be. So that sort of disappointed me because I felt as you know, you being such a, a loyal supporter of our channel, I felt like you got slighted there. I would love to know how you felt about that. Well, I, I was disappointed, uh, and particularly on the Yoda cover because it was my idea. I mean, it really was from start to finish. Um, you know, it was a, it's a kid's comic book basically, right? So that right there, that, that makes it a little bit harder to sell. So I, I was hoping they would just mention our store name next to it. And I reached out to one of the guys and he said that he didn't want to be accused of promoting store variants or, or pumping and dumping, I think was the term he used. Um, and so that's why he, he didn't give us the, the credit. Um, so I, I think that they should. I really do. Because, you know, some of these guys will have store variants on the list. I think it only makes sense. If you're going to mention the publisher, the writer, and the artist, why not the store who commissioned the cover? Um, so yeah, you know, it, it got to be the point where I actually reached out to, to one of the guys. Oh, that, and that response, um, so, that yeah. response, that response, Kevin, I gotta tell you, is kind of bullshit because again, as we said, they, you know, they've produced variants. And then even furthermore, um, if a variant reached the hot 10 from say one of their sponsors, I absolutely know they would have made sure to mention that sponsor name. And that was a shared variant with Golden Apple, wasn't it? Who is a sponsor of that website? Yeah, yes. Um, and I, I think, now I didn't go back and look, but I think they have mentioned the stores in the past. They if, own. You know, if we go back and look. They absolutely. Okay. They absolutely. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I don't know if it's just me, Frankie's Comics, they don't want to mention me, but I, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, but I guess people can find the cover because they can just go to eBay and do Pete Yoda and it'll come up. But but yeah, it, it was a shared cover with Golden Apple Comics in California. They I, they typically work with us on like probably 99% of the covers we do. Um, but yeah, I, so I think they should. I, I really do. If they're going to do the artist, the writer, the, the publisher, the title of the book, they should at least mention the store who produced it because we took the risk, you know, we paid for this. We took all the risk. I mean, I feel like we should get some credit for it. Mm. <laughs> Something. So even if it's just like my initials at the end of it, <laughs> KF, or, I mean, that'd be nice. So, so yeah, I, I I'm just glad your name's not Frank really Underwood did. then. <laughs> well, and the other thing I'll say is like when they've, when some of these guys have written articles, you know, about other things in the comic book industry. They're not afraid to mention the store store's name in. <laughs> right. So, but I, it is what it is. I'm glad that it made the list and it brought attention and it and it's bringing more attention to Peach. Um, and secondly, I think, I could be wrong, but I think it's bringing more attention to the Star Wars comic books. Yep. Because I, I just go on a little tangent here, if that's okay, if I, if I take a moment. Um, a lot of the stuff that, you see in the movies where there's like plot holes or you're like, well, where did that come from? Like that's just a lot of that stuff gets filled in in these comic books. And so the IDW comics and the Marvel cover comics are, are canon now. And um, a lot of the stuff that Dark Horse did is no longer canon. So I think that if you're a Star Wars fan, you should really check out the comics and the trade paperbacks and stuff, because they're going to fill in a lot of the stuff that the movies don't have time to fill in um and the hints that i'm getting from from the publishers is that the mandalorian season two and some of the other star wars tv shows on disney plus are going to heavily tie into the comics that are coming out um which is why maybe they won't let me put a Tano on the cover or they won't let me put mandalorian or boba fett (laughs) Or Jangle Fed. So, um, so people should pay attention. If they're Star Wars fans, you know, and everybody likes Star Wars. If they're Star Wars fans, they should be buying these comics. Not, they don't have to buy the store variant, but they can just buy the regular cover and read it because there's some good stuff in there that, that's kind of hinting at where things are going in the Star Wars universe in the future. 